bunch of goals that you're not actually tracking any progress for. I feel like that was me in 2022, but that is definitely not me in 2023. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time dropping by. I'm Amelia and today we are going to be talking about my goal progress. If you can use a hundred extra dollars to help you achieve your financial goals, swing on down to the subscribe button and become a subscriber of my channel. The first 1,000 subscribers will be entered into a giveaway for 100 bucks. And while you're down there, just uh, take a walk over to that like button, give it a little thumbs up, that really helps my channel grow. I am super excited about this video because, well, progress is awesome, but I'm also excited because I have a few new trackers that I'm using this year, and they've been helping me feel a lot more on top of things and helping me realize where I may need to draw a little bit more of my attention or change my process in order to actually achieve the goals I have set out for myself this year. First, I'll talk about my sinking funds tracker, and I will put a clip of that up on the screen so that you can see it and follow along with me. I have five specific sinking funds that I really want to track this year. The way this sheet works is I have the account name and then I have a column for what I started with in that account. So for Benny's vet expenses, I started with $0 this year. In January, I added $25 but spent nothing. And then in February, I added $300 but I spent $309, which means I have $16 remaining. For my emergency fund, I started the year with $1,053. I added $4 in January and spent three. I didn't really spend three, I just took $3 out. And then the same thing in February, I added $6 in interest, but I moved $4 out. So I took the $4 that I had accrued in interest in January and moved that out. So right now I have a $1,056 balance. I'm actually hoping to continue taking the interest out of all these accounts and putting them into my student loan sinking fund because I wanna put all of the interest that I'm earning in these accounts towards my student loans, and I'll just keep each account flat with what I actually put in and spend. At the beginning of 2023, I had $1,701 in my student loan account. I added $31 in January and spent nothing. And then in February, I added $6 from interest and spent nothing again. So I have $1,738 saved for my student loans. For car maintenance, I started with $0 at the beginning of the year and I had an oil change that I needed to get in January. So although I put $112 in, I immediately spent that $112 on the oil change. In February, I did add $100 and didn't spend anything. So I currently have $100 and vacation. I had zero dollars starting the year, but I put in five hundred and one dollars in January. I spent four hundred and sixty dollars of that in January, and then in February I put in four hundred two and spent three forty two, and now I have one hundred dollars remaining. This has already been extremely helpful because I am keeping track of my goals linking to this sheet as well. So let's jump on over to the goals sheet. Now the goals sheet is a little bit bigger because I have a few extra things that I am tracking here. On the sinking funds sheet, I'm really just keeping track of how much is in there. I can see that on the actual account, but I wanna know when I put the money in and when I took it out. And for my goals, I'm also tracking like how much I have left to the goal and percent to goal, etc. So there's a few more columns on this sheet. My first goal is to max out my 401k at $22,500. In my plan at the beginning of the year, I had $19,975. So this column is actually how much I have in my plan for the year that I could accommodate for these goals. So I had $0 starting at the beginning of the year and in both January and February, I put $1,537, which means that I have now $3,073 at the end of February. That leaves me with $19,427 left to my goal. And I have put 14% into my 401k for this year, and the year is 16% of the way through. So at the end of February, I just added up the days in January and February, divided by 365, and you get 16.16 .16 actually. I'm using that as a way to track how much progress I'm making relative to the year and if I'm actually on track and have done enough to complete all of these goals by the end of the year. 
I know these are stretch goals, so I don't expect to hit them all 100%, honestly, but I do expect to make significant progress, if not complete them all. That being said, some of these are specifically tied to when I get paid, right? So my 401k contributions are made when I get paid, and we haven't had any three paycheck months yet at my company. I won't actually get any of those until June as the first one. So a lot more progress will be made towards each of these goals when I have those months come up. For my emergency fund, my goal is $10,000. I started the year with 1,053 and that was all I had in plan. I didn't actually have anything planned to put towards this based on my regular income. In January, I put an extra dollar that was from interest, I believe, and moving things around. And then I actually took $3 out in net in February. Um, and I'm gonna keep that account actually at $1,050 going forward. That leaves me with $8,949, and that's 11% of the way to my goal. For student loans, my very lofty goal is to pay off $50,000 this year. In my plan as of now, I have $24,824. I started the year with $1,701 and then added 31, and then I added, I added 31 in January, I added six in February, which gives me $1,738, which is 3% of the way towards that goal. Extra income, I had a goal amount for the year of $25,000, again, very lofty, but somewhat necessary to help me fulfill a lot of these other goals. And I didn't have anything in plan because I didn't exactly have a specific plan of how I was going to make that extra money. So at the beginning of the year, I started with zero, of course. In January, I only made $66 extra, but in February, I made $1,144. Now these come from all different kinds of things, selling items, etc. And I am tracking how I made all of that money. So in, in January, all of that money came from selling extra items around my apartment. But in February, I had a couple of different things come through. So I had $12.49 in credit card offers. So this was cash back that I got from spending. One was filing my taxes through TurboTax, and then one was eating out. I got a couple extra dollars there. I did make $155.61 on Instacart. That is pre-tax, I will have to pay tax on that at the end of the year. Dosh, I made $15.53, so this is an app that I will link down below for you if you're interested, but it's very similar to like a Rakuten or something like that where you can link your card and get cash back using the app. It has some local restaurants and stuff like that, which is kind of nice. I got 15 bucks back from that because I did get a referral. If you are interested in using Dosh, I do get $10 when you successfully use the app. So I would really appreciate you doing that. And again, it'll be linked down below. I made $377.10 from selling items in my apartment. I also got my tax refund, only $344, which I'm actually very happy with. I didn't owe anything. I was able to tow that line very carefully last year. And that means that I was able to maintain control of my money throughout the year instead of giving it to the government. So very happy with only $344 back. I did get $207 and 54 cents from Rakuten. Again, another app that you can use to get cash back. I really like the app because it's relatively easy to use. You can just search for a company if you're looking to buy something online. You just go to the app first, just type in whatever company you're looking for. If they have an offer, you can just shop their website through the app. You just go right there. It takes you to the website and then you'll get the cashback offer and they pay out every quarter. So this was from cashback that I got from the holidays. I did get $26.05 from surveys on the go. Again, I will link that down below. I don't get anything if you use them, but it's pretty easy. It's one of the more simple websites or apps that I've used for surveys. I tried a different one recently and I just wasn't feeling it. So it's kind of annoying to like enter in all your information every time. I would say that's my least favorite part about surveys is that you have to enter your demographics for everyone. I'm like, what's the point of the app if you can't just like feed them my demographics? I don't know. Regardless, if you don't qualify for a survey, you get 10 cents to your account. If you do, you get the full value, which could be like a dollar, two dollars, sometimes it's more depending on what you do. And in February, I actually did a 
analysis or review of a Chase Bank. So I was able to get 16 bucks for that. And one last one that I used was Observa. I don't love these all the time because sometimes they sound a little time consuming, but I did do a brief observation of an Aldi. I was already going to be there doing an Instacart order. All I had to do was take a few pictures of the outside and the inside. This one was specifically looking at the self-checkouts, but my Aldi location didn't have any self-checkouts, so I just had to show that they didn't have any and then leave a few comments about the area. And that was it, and I got six bucks for that. And I didn't have to like hit a minimum to cash out, which I really appreciated. Surveys on the go is one that you do have to hit $10 for. I usually can hit 10 bucks in a month, but so far it's been kind of a slow month. So I don't know if that's just me not paying enough attention to it because I've been so busy, or if it's just kind of a slower month for surveys. I usually am able to hit $10 in a month. So that's how I made all my extra February income. Back to the goals. I have a $4,000 goal for my Roth IRA. I actually think I'm gonna try to max it out, but, but I don't have more than $4,000 in my plan for the year. So I started the year with zero. I haven't put anything towards that yet. And then my HSA, I had a $1,000 goal. Also thinking I would really like to max this out, but I only have $1,000 in my plan. I started with zero and I unintentionally put $296 towards this in January. Something happened with my election and it didn't register that I had changed it from the max allocation that I had been doing in 22. So I ended up putting almost 300 bucks towards it, which is 30% of my goal, which is great to be a little bit ahead. Um, but I put nothing towards it in February and I've changed that election now to be zero for a little while. And then I will go back and increase increase it um, once I've caught up because $296 was actually like eight paychecks worth of what I intended to put in there. Because I only put $1,000 in my plan for my HSA, that means that I'm when I over contribute to that account, I am taking away from most likely my student loan payments that I'm able to save for. So I don't want to sacrifice one for the other. Um, at this point. So that's the plan and that's how I'm doing on my goals. I'm really excited about this because it has been really fun to track everything. Obviously it's going to turn out the same way whether or not I'm tracking it, but there could be some potential influence of me actually tracking, making me more likely to contribute to these goals and to stay on budget so that I'm able to put my money towards them. So I think it's been just really fun so far and it has been helpful as I make progress throughout the year. I'm going to try to do these videos monthly, but I got a little behind and wasn't able to do one for January. So hopefully you will see one again soon in just a couple weeks telling you how March went. If you're curious how I did in March, please go ahead and become a subscriber right down here and check out some of my other videos right up here. Thanks so much for watching. Always Amelia.